the Sacred Female Entrepreneur Interview Series. This, I'm very pleased to be um, interviewing Cindy Scott today, who's had a very interesting journey and some events have happened that have completely changed her life. And I've had experienced that too. When the universe has a different idea for us, it doesn't matter how much we try and be in control or what, we, what plans we put into place. Um, they can literally all be turned on their heads when we um, follow what the universe is saying to us. And that's exactly what's happened to Cindy. So welcome, Absolutely. Cindy. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> really pleased to be speaking with you today because you've had such an interesting journey. And I know that, you know, you're going to be able to inspire and help so many other women out there um, who are struggling with different health issues and, and things like that and really be able to support them to, you know, be on this journey when, when the universe has its own ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that is, the, that is the aim. I do hope that I can help other people along the way. So if my, if my journey helps to uh, lighten the load for one other than that's it's all been worth it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. So would you like to just um, tell everyone what literally happened for you? What were you doing sure. and how did the universe come in <laughs> to take <laughs> over? its plans. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess if we cast back to January 2020, um, I thought my life was perfect. I um, was absolutely feeling like I lived in paradise. I was eating very well. I was as fit as I've ever been in a very happy relationship. And for probably the first time in my 15 years of business, I actually had a business plan in place. I had a vision board on the wall of, you know, this is the way my 2020 is going to roll. And fully anticipated, you know, hand on heart, 100%, this is, this is my path, this is where I'm heading. And then early February, diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and it wasn't the first time, it was my second time being di diagnosed with breast cancer. So being hit with it the second time and it being a far more aggressive form of cancer, it was like that kind of wake up call where it's like, okay, I might have skipped through the first lot. Yeah. But the second one, it's like, no, okay, you got to pay attention. There's got to be something here for you to get. Yes. And so I guess that was really, I mean, I went into a pretty dark place pretty quickly where I think a lot of people face with a diagnosis of cancer or any other sort of major uh, illness. Um, you know, you start to question, why me? Why now? Why again? Why am I here? Um, so for me, I thought, well, there's obviously something more that I need to explore within myself. Yeah. And I was prepared to go there. And fortunately, I had a beautiful man in my life too that said, well, stop work, down tools, take the time you need for treatment as well as to heal. So I'm super grateful to Chris for, for that support as well because without his support, I wouldn't have had the same journey. So yeah, um, yeah, within a few weeks, I actually closed my business down, which was probably the most challenging thing because I'm someone who it's easier for me to support everyone else or go and get my car service <laughs> than it is to actually take time out for me. So that was that was a really key learning for me to actually shine the light on myself and take time for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find that with a lot of women that I work with, they are always looking after everyone else first. Mm -hmm. and we always tend to put ourselves last. So, you know, hopefully we don't all have to go through such a huge wake up call to, to do that self care. Absolutely. We can start to implement and have both. And you said something interesting, like I remember when we was going into 2020, it was like there was such excitement about, you know, the being an entrepreneur you. <laughs> and, you know, having great goals and really being able to expand because we were going into this new energy and things like that. And so you had everything in place and then... I felt like I felt like I was on my path and then this, you know, lightning bolt of cancer was like... I was just totally blindsided and there was a real disbelief. I'm like, no way, this can't be me. I'm healthy, I'm strong. Like I've righted so many of the things that I thought weren't quite in alignment in my life. So um, being confronted, confronted with that diagnosis really shook me. Yes. Mm. And like I'd imagine that you would go into such a, a deep sense of not wanting to be out in the world anymore and, and just wanting to hide or blame 
uh, everything else or what happens when you're diagnosed again or even for the first time? So it's actually proven um, psychologically what happens when we go through adversity. We actually, instead of reaching out and connect with others, we actually go inward. And even though, yes, we know that there's lots of people on the planet going through a cancer diagnosis and journey at any one point, for some reason, I felt like I needed to go inward and I wanted to be quiet within mm. myself. But also at the same time, COVID was ramping up. So COVID was just starting to take off in January, February last year. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it was front and center. Everyone was in lockdown. I wasn't able to take support people to my appointments. Um, so that was another layer of complexity on top of my treatment journey. Um, I found it really difficult going into my chemo sessions without my husband there, without any friend or support. Yeah. Um, so that was really challenging. And so as COVID was taking off, I was going into the depths of darkness at the same time. And I know with what's happening in the world at the moment, COVID's still very much present. Um, there's a lot of people going through cancer treatment um, on their own. So um, in answer to your question, yeah, I went into a very dark place because I'm a rural people person. I yes. love to be around people. Yeah. I love to connect. I love hugs. Um, and then to go through all that feeling very isolated and alone was really challenging. And so, yeah, I went into a pretty dark place, I'd say psychologically, emotionally, yeah. um, where, you know, being the coach, I've been a coach for 15 years. I'm like, I've got all this toolkit of, you know, resources that oh, I yes. should be using should but um, <laughs> yes. of course I wasn't happy into those was I? I just I just wanted to feel sorry for myself yeah yeah and when do you think like the pivotal moment was when you started to come out of that and realize that there was a bigger message or there was something more for you to do I felt um, right from early diagnosis that there was something here for me. Like I, it was like I had my filter on for, well, what is it that I'm to get here? So I felt like there was a life lesson in it for me. Yeah. So probably right from the beginning, I felt like I needed to explore something. But of course I had to go into the darkness first, didn't I? Yes. And I <laughs> wanted to have that pity party and I wanted to feel sorry for myself. And so I guess, what I did is I started journaling. I, one of the one of the things that I felt really helped to give me a sense of calm was to write down what was going on for me, yeah. what was what was being stirred up, what were the emotions that I was experiencing. So journaling really helped. Um, but the other thing, and and um, bless him, my husband said, "Look, I think you need some help." And I said, "Yeah, I really think I need some help as well beyond me journaling." Um, so he rang the Cancer Council and shared my story with them and put this beautiful woman on the phone named Lucy who really, uh, she touched me uh, in a really deep way and um, connected me with a therapist. And I think at that time, I mean, I don't think there's any shame around getting support when you need it. Definitely. And I would encourage any person going through cancer treatment that's struggling emotionally, reach out. There are people out there to help you. The Cancer Council is fabulous. Um, there's plenty of therapists and counsellors that specialise in the oncology space um, to give support. And I would say that was the turning point where I felt validated, I felt heard, I felt like my experience was normalised because I wasn't the only person going through it. So these people are trained, they've heard these stories so many times because it's such a well-worn path. Yeah, of course. So um, it was really starting to work with that therapist. I actually worked with two because she um, left the industry and then I had to find another one, but that was great. They both helped me in very different ways. And um, it was getting that help that was really the turning point for me. Mm. It is because, you know, we can think that we have to do it by ourselves and we have to be strong and, you know, not ask for support or anything. But no one can go through that by themselves no it's not a solo journey it's no. definitely a team effort and that's what i say um you know they say it takes a village to raise a child i think it takes a community to actually help someone journey through cancer i think we need support that is the time when you are so vulnerable and yeah. so in need of love connection compassion and that's probably one of the gifts in all of this for me because I've been one of those really strong, I can do this, I'm, you know, yes. I've, I've got this kind of women. And, um, you know, to actually reach out and go, okay, world, I am struggling. Like for the world to see Cindy's falling apart, like particularly my family, they're used to seeing me very strong. Yeah. My husband used to seeing me very strong. 
um, to see me actually go, you know what? I'm not okay. Yeah. I'm not fine. I need help. And, you know, my hair is falling out. I'm feeling really ugly. I'm, I'm not happy. Um, to actually let people see me, to let them in, yeah. that was so hard. Yeah. Um, but it made the difference for me in terms of learning that um, vulnerability and allowing people to help me. Yes. Made a huge difference in my whole cancer journey. I think that you, that's one of the keys. Like other women who I've worked with who have had cancer, they are very strong on the outside, but they have this desperate need, neediness <laughs> that's pushed so far down inside them that mm. the cancer allows that to come up and come out and they can no longer keep putting on this facade of being strong and independent and pushing through all the time because mm. they've actually been broken down to... That's what it feels like. Yeah. It, there is a brokenness to it and I totally relate to what you're saying. You know, I've yeah. carried this tough exterior, I've got this, but I'm a marshmallow on the inside, you yes. know. <laughs> I actually need that help. Um, yeah. And so that was... I guess one gateway for me to tap into that. Yeah, mm. fantastic. So with your journaling and everything that you was doing, what came from that? Like what was the next step for you? So I was really lucky um, just prior to my diagnosis, I met this beautiful group of women. I was invited um, on this weekend away with these spiritual business owners. And I thought, it's a heck yes, I must go um, to this weekend. And so I met this gorgeous uh, group of women and at, you know, we sort of met, but we're all sort of geographically dispersed. So it was like, well, why don't we start having some Zoom calls? And then my cancer diagnosis happened all at the same time. So we started ramping those up and having weekly calls. And yeah. they started at like an hour and then it moved to two hours and then it was <laughs> three hours um, every week. And we were so committed to catching up. We just like fell in love with the energy and vibe of the group and the support that we were getting. So it wasn't just about me. It was, we were yeah. all, um, all getting benefit from the group. So, uh, probably early last year, probably around February, around my diagnosis, we started with these regular zoom calls. And, um, so I was journaling, going through my muck and I'm like, look guys, I'm not sure whether you really want me on these calls. I'm looking ugly. I got no hair. Um, I'm in a cranky place and they said, no, we absolutely want you to show up and we want to see you, you know, in your truth, like yeah. however you're feeling. So I was like, wow, that's amazing to be held and to be seen by other amazing spiritual women. And yeah, cut a long story short, I was journaling away and I was telling them that I was journaling just to try and make sense of what was happening to me and to try and find some calm around my experience and one day one of the ladies said to me why don't you actually write a book with all of your journal entries and I'm like I'm not an author I'm not a writer like what yeah anyway and then all of them got very excited about the idea of me writing a book that would help other people going through cancer uh, a cancer journey and I thought of course, yes, that's what I'm meant to do. Yes. So that, this book um, was born in the midst of my own um, cancer journey last year. So it's called The Healing Journal, The Gift of Cancer. And so what this book contains is a little bit of my journey. I didn't feel, and that was probably some of my resistance, I didn't feel the world needed another cancer story. Like I, I know there's plenty of those on the yes. shelves. But what I thought I would do is bring some of my coaching expertise through. So that there's some self-inquiry questions in there. There's some mindfulness practices. Like I meditated like a demon all the way through just to try and calm my nervous system. So there's lots of prompts and tools in this book to help any woman going through a cancer journey to, um, I guess, be more present and more compassionate for herself going through. Um, and there's lots of uh, guided journaling pages through here as well so that um, the person that, you know, gets this book can actually make it their own. So it becomes a keepsake. Yes. Mum had, my mum's had breast cancer twice, um, and, but it was about 28 years ago. So I'm like, mum, tell me about your experience. How did you feel? How did you, you know, she's like, well, I don't know, it was so long ago. I just remember it was horrible, but I don't remember. And so I would love to have read a book like this of her experience um, to tap yes. into that more fully. Because it's such a beautiful book and it's been illustrated so beautifully. Like every, every page of our book. Every page has been <laughs> <laughs> so illustrated. The, I probably should just share, the book's been divided into four seasons. So these aren't weather seasons, they're more your uh, internal emotional seasons. 
And so I had already written the first part of the book was starting at a Thanksgiving feast. Um, being a Canadian born, um, we celebrate Thanksgiving every year. And we had had a, a whole um, group of beautiful friends around and we had this gorgeous celebration um, of Thanksgiving and gratitude. And, you know, everyone around the table went around and offered what they were gra grateful for in their life. And there was tears, like it was a really moving experience. So I thought that was the perfect, beautiful first story. Um, and then I thought, well, that's autumn in, in Canada. Thanksgiving happens in autumn when the, the trees yeah. are nice and brightly colored and whatnot. And then we move into winter, which is the depths of darkness and me being in the thick of chemo, feeling ugly, my hair's all falling out. And then we move into spring where I'm starting to, you know, um, pick myself back up and put myself back together and then add out into summer which is really about self-love acceptance moving forward so the book's broken down into the four seasons and there's 12 chapters so each season has three chapters and um yeah so each section of the book has a very different look and feel with the artwork so the graphic designer stephanie has done an amazing job yes it's yeah, absolutely it's amazing beautiful and the thing is this is like a um that private support for women who are going through such a hard time that if there is anything that they really don't want to share with anyone, they can put it in here. Mm. And, but it's still releasing it from the body so that the body's not holding on to it anymore. Yeah, I actually had a man say that to me. I had the most beautiful feedback from men, particularly around yeah. this book. But because it's got the, the, um, the binding on it to close yes. it, it's like it's this special place where you can put your secret thoughts and then you can put your band on it and lock it away. It's like that yeah. special place where it's for your own thoughts and feelings. And then you can pull it out when it suits you and you can park it when, That's you, know, right. when you don't want to go there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's absolutely a beautiful book. And where can um, women go to buy this? Because this would make a beautiful gift as well. It's the perfect gift. So that's actually one of the things that when I was first putting this book together, I thought, Women going through cancer treatment will buy this for themselves. But as it's turning out, it's becoming more of one of those inspirational gifts to yeah. give someone. Um, and I get a lot of people approaching me now like, oh, look, I've got a friend going through this cancer. You know, how should I support them? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And so now this is becoming a really great gift. Instead of buying flowers or chocolates or something that, you know, don't last yeah. very long, this is a gift that keeps on giving. Yes. So um, the landing page where you can go to get more information is um, healingjournal.co. Um, you can go and actually get a, a free download of the first couple of chapters of the book to get a taste of it and see whether it's the journey that you want to travel on. Um, and you can also buy the book on that page as well. Fantastic. And is there a particular message that you would like to go, like say to women at the moment who are in that you know, real strong mindset of the business and they keep pushing themselves and they're trying to have that strong persona, what would you like to say to them? Mm. <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> what I would love to say, and this has probably become one of my, my key messages for women in particular, but men as well, slow down you know I, I don't think we need to keep the pace that we seem to be on this extraordinary treadmill of go 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 um, I think taking deeper breaths slowing down doing less but doing quality is really really key um, and and to the the tough exterior I, I think um, you know I don't think it's serving anyone I don't think it protects you I don't think it keeps you safe I, I think if anything it, it's a barrier um, to true connection. So, you know, in the, in the words of Brene Brown, you know, let that go and actually be vulnerable um, and allow people to connect with the truth of who you are rather than that tough shell because, you know, that's only skin deep kind of connection. It's not, it's not genuine. Yeah. So let it go, be real, be yourself, be true to you and let people into your heart. Yeah, fantastic. It's been absolutely wonderful speaking with you today. Thank and you, man. I know that this is going to change millions of women's lives. I feel and, that too. Yeah, and um, I really appreciate having this chance to speak with you and help other people who are going through this journey who can be feeling alone at the moment and knowing that they don't actually need to. So, yes. Thank you. You're welcome.